common fault for today's player is to get out there and really swing too hard and out of his comfort zone. And I find myself doing it also all the time. When I get to a par five, I know I'll swing 95% of my total strength. That's not where I deliver my best shots. My best shots are when I swing the club between 75 and 85%, and that's about as far as it'll go. So let me tell you, not only that, I think the wedge play is very important to, to not try and force those shots. I have a 60 degree wedge out here, and occasionally I know that my, my total distance of this club is 80 yards, yet sometimes I'll try and go 85. That's really not smart. I feel comfortable with this club between 60 and 80, and I should never try and expand that capacity. So I'm going to hit a couple of shots with this club. And uh, 60 degree is a club I think that we're using a lot more these days because the golf, the game of golf is more vertical rather than horizontal. Over in England and playing some of the Lynx courses, we play the ball on the ground, kind of hit bump and run shots. But over here in America, in the States, now we have these tall cavernous bunkers. We have really smaller putting surfaces to hit to as far as uh, playing target type of golf. So I think you need to really work on the wedge game. So I have this little 60 degree out here and I want you to not so much focus on the direction of the ball and everything. I'd really like you to focus on the balance and the timing of this shot. It's not so much about fundamentals anymore. It's basically about timing and rhythm and balance. Check out the footwork here. Footwork is so important because if you've got good footwork and good balance, then your footwork looks real easy, doesn't it? You'd be surprised when some players get under the gun, they can, they can look really good on the practice tee. They can have really good footwork and then out on the course they'll try something different and their feet will be going all over the place. But watch, watch the nice action. Just like that, nice and easy. Now the minute I'll, I'll go to a little bit longer club, and again, I'm still going to be swinging easy right now, but when I start with these wedges, I just want you to watch my pace and my tempo and my footwork. This is a 56 degree club, and this is called the strong sand wedge. There we go, looks good and easy now. Now I'm gonna work into a seven iron. And if I do this right, which I ought to be able to do by now, um, the pacing, the balance, the flow should all look very similar to those first two clubs I hit, the 60 and the, and the 56. When I get out of my rhythm, I should go right back to those, those short clubs, try and establish that rhythm and that balance and that footwork again. Same pace, same balance, and same rhythm. I think that'll help your game. Just work that way all the way through the bag. And if you can feel your, feel your tempo start to slip and get out of pace and your footwork start to get out of balance, go right back to the wedge and hit them cute little shots and establish that footwork and that pacing that you need with the long game. You know, when it comes to the golf swing, these cameras, like this camera that's on me today, this has been a great deal for the golf swing. It's also been very negative in a lot of senses because it's allowed us to focus on positions in the golf swing. Now, what you have to understand is the golf swing is a continuous motion. What you have is you've got a lot of centrifugal force that's involved here in what's going to happen in the swing. And what I'd like to help you with a little bit here today is how to get that club face to square on the ball. Most of you fight the ball slicing to the right, and you fight a lack of distance with your driver because you have a hard time squaring the face. There's a position that you see in magazines that you see on videos, and it's this one right here. When you see the player come down and you see that this angle has stayed here for a long time, they, they, they use the word hold the angle. 
Well, you got to be really careful when you try to hold anything. That position is correct, but what I've learned from all of my teaching and from playing is that the way you create that position and still be able to square the club face on the ball, there's some things that you have to feel and you have to understand. So I'm going to start with a real simple thing. And I, th th This golf swing is not rocket science, believe me. If it was, I wouldn't be doing it. So, so there's some things that you can get trapped into believing and trying to practice that can make the game very, very difficult. If I took any one of you and we started you out with just your left hand and we had you swing up to the top of your swing and then back down and put your left hand right back where it started. As you watch here, as I go up, my left arm gradually and continually rotates as I'm going up. As I start down, it gradually and continually would rotate right back down to the bottom. If I wanted to hit something there, I wouldn't hold off the rotation in my left arm until the last second and at the last second try to flip. That's where a lot of you are when they say hold the angle. Now the angle will stay, but what you have to actually feel like you're doing, if you take the golf club here, you have to actually feel like that right from the top of your swing as you start down, you have to feel like this left arm is rotating the club back out in front of you. That's the term you hear these tour players using all the time. If you get to the top of your swing and you try to make this position that you see on the pictures happen, when you go to full speed, what's going to happen is the weight of this club head at the top of your swing, when you start down, that club head goes from weighing just a few ounces to weighing pounds and heavier and heavier as it comes down. So what it's doing, it's wanting to make your left arm move this way, which is opening the face up. So you almost have to counter that with a feeling that as you start down that you're tipping that club back out in front of you. People make fun of Sergio's swing, but I can tell you he has the club back here, but when he starts down, this left arm is unwinding right down into the ball. So that club is turning right into the ball, creates a tremendous amount of torque and a lot of speed. Now if you get up and you pull, now we've got the opposite thing. So what you have to learn to do with this golf club is you've got to learn to time how much of that rotation do you need in this arm to make that club face square up. Now a lot of you battle what's called an early release, throw it for the top, casting. Most of that is because your sense is that if you do this, what's going to happen is the ball won't slice. But in reality, it doesn't matter how much you unhinge your wrists, that's not going to do anything to the face. It's the rotation in your forearm that makes the face work. So if we were to just practice the timing of that rotation, you're going to get a whole lot better. Now Jack Nicklaus, in, in one of his books, he wrote that you could not release the club too soon. He wanted you to feel like you released the club from the top. Well, me being the layman, I went out, I thought he meant release your wrists. Well, what happened to me is I just stick the club in the ground every time I tried to do it. In reality, what he's doing is he's releasing the weight of the club back out in front of him. He's not unhinging his wrists. He's releasing this arm right back down to where it started. Now, a really good way to practice that, a good drill, and you can do it with your driver. You just get set up, you make a back swing, and then you come right back to the ball right before impact and you stop. And you repeat that two or three times and you get a feel for the timing of what you're having to do to make that club head work. And then on about the third time, instead of stopping at the ball, you let the club keep going through the ball. And you work on the timing of the rotation in this arm so that the club face shows up. Now once you get a feel for that, and your hands and arms know how to react, then as your body gets more involved, you'll react and get the club in the right position. Don't hold the angle. The angle will show up. The reason you release too early for most of you is you're trying to catch the face up. You're catching the face up with the wrong thing. There's got to be a rotation in your forearm. It's not a pull, it's a rotation. The club will do the rest of the work for you. If you'll take that information, work on that, I know you're going to become a better player. I want to share with you a 
the, the most fundamental shot in golf, one that we all have to have. It's got to be our bread and butter shot. It's a chip. Might call it a pitch and run. You're going to have it if you hit it in the trees and you've got, you're in pine straw or you're in dirt. You've got to hit a solid chip to get out into the fairway. You don't want to flub it. Obviously around the green, you want to be able to chip it and make solid contact so you can get it up and down to shave scores. This is where, you say, where, where you're going to shave scores. Couple things, guys, and understand that, the, that fundamentally we've, we have to have or understand where the bottom of the arc is. And the bottom of the arc, when you hit a chip shot, is just slightly ahead of the golf ball. I'm not trying to go under the golf ball. It's just like a normal golf shot, any other shot that I'm making. I, it's just a mini version of it. So I want to hit it solid. If I got a tight lie, I have no worries. I want to set up, and if I understand where the bottom of my arc is, just keep it this simple. The bottom of your arc is always opposite your center. If I use my center, use my sternum as my reference, and my shoulders are parallel here, or I'm sorry, level to the ground, there's my center, and relative to the golf ball, I want to take my center and move it slightly ahead of the golf ball. So notice I just kind of leaned a little left. I'm not a big advocate of playing the ball too far back in your stance. I'm more concerned about where the, bottom, where the ball is relative to your center, not where it is relative to your feet. So I'm going to set my center slightly ahead. Notice that I leaned a little bit left. My head and my sternum went left. Now, that's where the bottom of my arc is. So if notice now if I set it up, the bottom of my arc is up ahead of the golf ball. So now if I set up and keep my shoulders as level as I can throughout the swing, I'll make my swing, the club's going to go up, it's going to come down, it's going to hit the ball, and then it's going to hit the ground. The bottom of the arc would be slightly ahead. So there is my de there's what we hear, you want to make a descending blow. Well, I've just done that, but I haven't physically tried to hit down on the golf ball. It's the worst thing in the world to do is try to hit down on it. Let the club do all the work. You're going to do all the work in the setup. If I happen to set up with my shoulders, and we'll read, and you read in, in, in golf magazines, and even see sometimes in the golf channel, we'll play the ball back your, you know, off your back of your right foot. Well, I could do that, but the problem is, I, I can get away with that if I kept my shoulders level. The problem is, is that tweaks people into wanting to go like this with their shoulders. Now your shoulders are set up where your right shoulder's too low, left shoulder's too high, and now, my, now I'm set up this way. So during my swing, if you look at this, now the bottom of my arc is actually behind the golf ball. If I stayed right here during my swing, I'm going to hit the ground before I hit the ball, and it's not going to allow me to pivot forward. So that, that would be the one thing. I can do that. I can play the ball back in my stance if I kept my shoulders level. So that's all the way back off my back foot. If I keep my shoulders level, that's okay. There's a time and a place for that. But I have a nine iron here as a, as a, as, as a chipping club but I've just turned my 9-iron into about a 7-iron when I play the ball that far back. That's okay, and there's a time and a place for that. But here's just, I want you to, again, I'm going to go over bottom of the arc because I've just covered half of it. The bottom of the arc relative to the golf ball, we know, is now we want to make sure our center is ahead because that's where we want the club to, we want to hit the ball and then the ground. So I set my center up ahead of the golf ball. So my weight, yes, the majority of my weight has gone over to my forward leg. My head and my sternum are ahead of it, my shoulders are level. So now I know where the bottom of the arc is relative to the golf ball. How about from a height dimension? I've got to understand that the bottom of the arc, I've got two, two bottom of the arcs. I've got to know this way and I've got to know this way. So I want to take my, I want to have good posture. This is key in, in fundamental golf and it doesn't matter what, what shot you're hitting. But you've got to be very balanced. Very, I, I like to feel if your abs, your abs are kind of sucked in and tight a little bit, that'll give you a sense of, of balance. Well, you, know, we, you, you hear golfers and or other athletes talking about the core muscles. Well, quite honestly, it all comes from right in here. So I'm going to be thinking about this in part of my setup, not to the point where I'm too tight, but it's going to help me with balance. I'm going to be very stable. So now I'm looking at very stable. I'm going to let my arms hang. So notice where my arms hang. My arms can't go any further. So as far as the bottom of the arc goes here, I'm going to set the club down to where it's just barely touching the top of the grass, not buried into the ground, but just barely touching the top of the grass. And right where my arms hang, I'm then going to take my grip. So now I know I can't go any further down, so I'm now I'm not worried about chunking it. If I understand that I can't go any further this way, the only way I could do that would be to, to lunge down. But to, if my arms are already extended, then the bottom of my arc is already there. So now that I have, so I call that measuring out to the shot. 
if you have a ball slightly above your feet, if I had the ball above my feet, let's say it's up in here, well now I bend from the hip, I get my posture, I let my arms hang, well now look where I'm holding the club. I'm holding the club almost all the way on the shaft, my fingers are on the shaft, but that's the bottom of my arc. So I'm measuring out to the particular shot. So that you want to make sure you do that because obviously when you're around the green, if you miss the green, never or rarely are you have a perfectly flat lie. You've got these uneven lies. So you have to understand, all right, this is, I've got an uneven lie ball above my feet, below my feet. Well, let me take my posture. Let me find out where, where my arms hang. Okay, I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to make, try to get my center ahead of the golf ball, keep my shoulders level. And now I'm going to go ahead and make a swing and find out where I'm hitting the ground. What I've just told you is actually, it, it's great to read it, it's great to understand it, but you know what, in reality, everybody's different. Everybody has a little tendency. You might have a little hitch in your swing. Well, you need to know where the bottom of your, of your arc is. So let's say that you just heard me say, this is where I want to set the ball up and my center ahead. Well, if I made a swing, and, and on purpose, I'm going to accidentally, I'm going to hit a little further behind the ball. And I make my swing, and I hit back behind the ball where I think it should be. Well, that's okay. Do it again. Make another practice swing. Hey, I did it again. Well, guess what? That's where the bottom of your arc is that you need to play. So now just take a blueprint picture. There's where I hit the ground. So I'm going to set up. I'm going to play the ball right there. So when I look at that, I go, hey, that's all the way back off my back foot. I'm going to set up. I'm going to play it in the same place. And now just repeat the same swing because now you've just found where the bottom of your arc is for that particular shot. Uneven lies, guys, that's what makes golf so difficult is that there's uneven lies. Well, you have to know where your bottom is. So always make some practice swings to find where the bottom of your arc is. Understand that your shoulders are level, you're centered, your arms hang, you know where the bottom of your arc is here, your head and your sternum are slightly ahead of the golf ball, and then from there, you just, make, just let the club go. Just let it go up, come back down, and you're going to find it's very difficult to, to find the, the ball other than sweet spot and then the ground like it's supposed to happen. Okay, now, we've set up well. We know where the bottom of our arc is. We've got our shoulders level. Our head, our sternum are up slightly ahead of the golf ball. Weight's a little bit more forward than it is back. Now, that doesn't ensure that I'm going to hit a perfect shot because what happens